I have used this Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL2 on the Great Glen Way and on the Pacific Crest Trail. So that's over 2,750 miles, which is over 200 nights. I have used it in the heat of the desert, in torrential rain, in snow, and in high winds. And today, what I wanna do is tell you what I think of this tent. I'm going to go through the specs in a very basic and quick fashion because I have already reviewed this tent before I headed out on my PCT through hike. If you are interested in all the technical details then check out my video here where I reviewed it and go into a lot more detail. This video is more about my thoughts of the tent and how it fared up over the distance. So this tent is by Big Agnes, it's the Tiger Wall UL2, so it's a two person tent, it's three season, it weighs in at 1,030 grams, which is two pounds and four ounces, and that doesn't include the pegs and also the little bags included. The height is 99 centimetres, which is 39 inches, and the length is 218 centimetres, which is 86 inches. It's got two vestibules and two doors, the fly and floor are silicone treated nylon ripstop with a waterproof coating and the tent body is a breathable nylon ripstop and 15 denier polyester mesh. I was quite surprised this tent was so compact. This includes everything you need. So it has got the rain cover, the tent itself, the ground sheet, all the pegs and the bags included in here. And what I like to do on trail was separate it. So I kept the poles separate from the tent and this was to avoid the poles being damaged when I started putting the tent on the inside of my pack as well as preventing the poles from damaging the tent body itself. Sometimes I attached the rain fly to the outside of my pack when it was wet so it didn't wet anything in my pack as well as it being easy to access during the day so I could dry it out. show you what I did like and didn't like about sleeping in this tent after over 200 nights. One decision I made when buying a tent was to get a two person one and I am so glad I did because on trail I loved having so much space inside my tent. I liked the fact that I could move about, get changed, store all my gear in there if I wanted to and it just felt such a great space on a night. I never felt crowded or claustrophobic and it was nice to be able to sleep in the middle of the tent sometimes when the weather was bad so I didn't lean against any of the tent walls. One habit I got into very quickly was keeping my pack inside my tent with me and this wasn't just in the rain, I liked to do it the whole trip really to keep it away from the elements as well as the little critters that were out there. Waking up to your pack covered in mouse droppings isn't something that's very pleasant. And this is where this tent really came into its own. The vertical foot end corners allowed me so much space at the bottom of the tent, which meant that not only did I have that extra space to store things, but I could fit my pack comfortably at the bottom of my tent. Even though the space was great, it was a little bit larger than a lot of the single tents and it sometimes didn't fit into the very small spaces that were available to me sometimes. But it just meant I had to hike a little bit further that day to find a more suitable spot or squish in really tight and not really put the rain covers down, which wasn't too much of a problem most of the time, but it is something to be a little bit mindful of. Because it is a dual wall tent, it means that it was able to breathe and that meant less condensation problems than that of those with single walls. However, the disadvantage of this is the fact that it does weigh a little bit heavier as well as takes a little bit longer to set up. I did encounter a couple of problems out on trail when it was pouring it down, trying to set this tent up because what would happen is you'd have to set this mesh section up first and then once that was up with the poles in it, you then put the rain fly over the top 
and there wasn't really an easy way of doing it whilst it was raining and not getting the inside of the tent wet and getting the rain fly over the top first so it was a bit of a balancing act trying to put the rain fly over the top of the mesh and then kind of get under it somehow and put it up whereas people with the single wool just pop them up straight away and they didn't have as many problems but I do like the fact that it was a little bit more spacey and the fact that the two walls prevented a lot of condensation problems. It had great venting systems throughout the tent and it always had air. Even in the rain fly itself, you'll see here, it gives you the option of being able to open it from the bottom for ventilation or from the top. There were these Velcro tabs that attached to the fly itself. I like these because they secure round the tent poles and helps align the fly, making it much more stable when it's all set up. My absolute favourite thing about this tent was the ability to be able to sit up in it and have a full 360 degree view of my surroundings. That is something I never got tired of. Before I left for the PCT, I knew this was a problem because I experienced it as soon as I got the tent. And that's the zip on the rain fly. When you just use one hand, what tends to happen is as you're lifting the zip up, unless you're actually holding this and stretching it away as you're lifting up the zip, it does get caught very frequently because the material is so close to the teeth on the zip but I found that I used to use one hand to use the zip and I used to poke my other hand through pull this out so it wouldn't get caught. The rain fly and the floor material is 15 denier which does compromise on durability. To avoid damage I carried and used a footprint every night but this did add an additional bit of weight which was about 170 grams which is six ounces one thing to know is that this was not a waterproof ground sheet. It was a barrier between the ground and the tent, so just a protective barrier to help prevent damage to the tent. So when the ground was wet, water did soak through the tent. I combated this by adding a waterproof sheet underneath my footprint when it was raining, so the ground was wet, or when I was camping on snow. So what that stopped is any water permeating through this and into the tent itself. I enjoyed having all these mesh pockets within the tent as well as the loops. I always like to keep my phone in here and link the earphones through there. I also used to keep my head torch up here so I knew where it was in the night. Down here I used to keep my items that if I needed to go to the bathroom in the night I knew exactly where they were right by the door. <laughs> and also I like to hang up my towel on the loop up here and that would just dry in the night. On the Big Agnes website, it claims that this tent is freestanding. This is what happens when it stands free. First of all, you lose the corners where your feet are supposed to be because they just cave in. And then the slightest bit of wind, <laughs> your tent goes flying. I would not say this was freestanding, I would say it was semi freestanding. Another dislike is the price. This tent in the UK retailed at £370, which is more than what it would have retailed in the US. But I obviously got this tent as an import, which was already from an online store in the UK. So I did save a little bit of money, but it could have been a lot worse because I know that other tents out there are a lot more expensive. If I had gone for a cheaper tent, I would have had a lot more weight to carry. So overall, I think the balance was okay for the price, but it was a little bit pricey all the same. Something that really confused me with this tent is that it's supposed to have been provided with eight stakes. Now, mine only arrived with seven, so I think I was just unfortunate, but the tent itself, I would say, needed a minimum of 10 to go out on trail with. So starting from the head end of the tent, you've got one here, two, three, and then you've got one for the side, that's four, five, six, which is the one in the middle, seven, and another one holding open the door here, which is eight. 
However, if it's raining, you'll notice that the fly can end up resting on the corner of the inside of the tent. And that's because if you only have eight tent stakes, then you have got both the rain fly and the tent itself using one single stake. And that is how the water ends up getting soaked through onto the inside of the tent here. What you have to do to combat that is put another stake in, in a different position, so you can drag the rain fly over onto a different angle. And it's the same on that side as it is for that side. So of those eight stakes, you would need an additional two to just combat that when it was raining. That would give you a total of 10 stakes. However, if it's raining or extremely windy as well, you'll also notice that the tent has these extra guy lines on it. So when it's really windy, you're supposed to put these out. So you're supposed to stake these out. There's one here and then round the head of the tent, there are two. There's one here and there used to be one here as well, which I unraveled and I'll explain that too. So when it's very windy, you then need to stake those out, but you don't have enough stakes. So you need to carry an additional three. That means out of the eight stakes provided with the tent, you could potentially be looking at having to purchase an additional five stakes. I took the stakes out that were provided with the tent, as well as a couple of extra because I knew I would need them. I think usually I ended up just using the 10 stakes or sometimes just the eight if it wasn't very windy. Those were all my likes and dislikes about the tent. So now let me show you how it's held up after all this time out on trail in all the different conditions that I've found myself in. The rain fly remained completely intact with no holes and the seams all stayed in place. I didn't incur any punctures on the floor and the seams were perfect. All the mesh pockets remained as good as new. The zips are all still in full working order with no snags on any of them. I incurred a couple of holes on the mesh part of the tent. This one was from a tent stake and these were by ants that attacked my tent one evening. Anybody that watched my videos from the trail will probably know that I had quite an incident one night with high winds when out camping and I found myself at early hours in the morning having to battle with my tent because what had happened was one of the guy lines had actually snapped in the wind. Now I am not blaming Big Agnes for this. The guy lines are very lightweight on the tent but they were pretty durable but it did snap <laughs> and I found the fact that the tent had actually caved in on me. And we have a situation. <laughs> the, um, the wind's pretty bad here this morning. It's been really bad all night. And um, some of my, <laughs> my tent guy lines have snapped. Yeah, so I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna go because there's no point staying in here. It wasn't too terrible though because the tent itself it has got extra guy lines on it for when the winds are really bad and I'll show you these now. These are on the side of the tent and I think I only ever used these a couple of times but when I found that my tent had that little incident in the night I ended up chopping up one of these to loop round the guy line that had snapped which fixed the problem. So if you were to purchase this tent, I would recommend taking just a little bit of extra guy line out with you in case anything snaps. So the big question is, was I happy with this tent and did it live up to what I expected from it? And the answer is absolutely. It was a fantastic tent to take out on trail and I am so pleased with my decision. No, I am not sponsored by Big Agnes, but if you do happen to work for Big Agnes and want to send me anything for free, that's absolutely fine <laughs> because it completely surpassed all my expectations that I had of it. And I honestly thought I would run into a lot more problems than I did with this tent, considering how long I was out on trail for without a break. So I have been so happy with it. The big question probably is, 
as well. If I had to do it all over again, would I still choose this tent? And it's a strange one for me to answer this because on one hand I would say absolutely yes. I loved it, we've been through a lot together and it's looked after me well. But I think if price and co or cost wasn't an issue at all, I would have liked to try another tent. Now there was a tent out there that was quite popular on trail and that I'd seen before I'd gone out on trail. But it was more expensive and also to get it shipped to the UK because it's not currently sold over here, it would have cost nearly a thousand dollars. So the tent itself was the Z-Pax Duplex and that's currently going for about six hundred dollars I believe at the moment. But I would have incurred shipping costs, customs charges, extra taxes and to me all that extra money was just not worth it. I mean I would have saved 500 grams of weight which is a huge amount but I just didn't want to take the risk and I would rather have spent my money on other things and I have been pleased with this tent I'm not gonna lie but I would have liked to try that other tent because it looked so compact, it was very lightweight and a lot of people had great experiences with it. But as with any tent, if you look after them well, if you try and put it in places that haven't got all the sharp objects on the ground, make sure you clear the ground, carry a ground sheet, take care of it, they can last a lot longer than you expect. Apart from the animals, the animals can be a little bit pesky. A lot of mice decided to attack mesh on the tents. So the fine mesh in here, a lot of the uh, duplexes and soloplexes, I think they're called the single ones, got eaten up by mice which wasn't very pleasant because once that's gone, it's kind of gone, you're out of your warranty for things like that. But I hope you have enjoyed this video and that it has been useful. As I have said before, I have done another video going into a lot more detail on all the technical specifications of this tent and I will put the link in the description box below as well as up here somewhere and you can check that out if you like. But until next time, goodbye!